Could the legends be true? Could two DC movies in a row be good? Up is down, black is white, nothing makes sense anymore! I saw Shazam today, and it was actually really good. It was very enjoyable, um, without getting too far into the spoilers just yet. I will say they did borrow from Jeff Johns's iteration, but not in a terrible way. I think they actually did some things better than Johns did. Billy in the comics in Jeff Johns's reinvention was just a jerk who, you know, oh, he, he can't find his family, but, you know, they barely really touch on him looking for his parents, and he just treats everyone like they did something wrong to him, and he thinks he's got the world figured out. This Billy in the movie does not. Billy, like, there is a scene where Billy tells Darla, you know, we're not really brother and sister, but he says that in kind of like a letting her off easy type of thing. Like, he's he's not saying it to be mean. He's not saying it because he's disillusioned. He's saying it because, like, he, he's just not ready to trust people and he doesn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Before, he didn't care about hurting anyone's feelings. And you can tell Darla's hurt by it, but... It's not, it's not like, it's not like in the comic. She's not like running off crying, everyone's going to comfort her, and Mary having to throw him into a room and scold him for being a jerk. Freddie Freeman is an aspiring con artist. In the movie, he seems to want to actually be Billy's friend. Or, or brother. They're not complete delinquents. There's some delinquency, some of it even from the comics. There is a scene where they get money from an ATM. It's played for laughs. Billy doesn't hate everyone. He's just kind of keeping to himself. He's focused on finding his mom. Not both his parents, just his mom. He uh, That's why he keeps running away from foster home at their foster home. The uh, Vasquez's the in the comics they're they're fine they're nice enough people but um uh we don't get too in depth with them we get a little backstory which they you know how they were in the foster system and we get just about as much uh in the in the uh, movie except they they outright tell billy they used to be foster kids themselves um and and they're, they they joke with each other in front of the kids they joke with the kids pedro in the comics, he just didn't say much. I figured he just didn't think that there was much for him to say. Um, here, he just seems a little more... Uh, asocial, I suppose. Something I can relate to. Um, Eugene, in the comic, is this kind of... child prodigy, a general genius, where, oh, he's smarter than the teachers, and he's not shy about showing it. Here, he looks several years younger, and he seems to be more of a gamer. Not that he's, like, a clod or anything, but he does show some talent he claims he got from playing some games. Darla is more or less how you'd expect, and she's... She, she's, she's fun. Mary, she is, uh... She, she's, she doesn't seem quite as much the leader of the group as she is in the comics. But Movie Mary does not seem to be Billy's long-lost twin sister, because she is obviously several years older, because she, you know, she talks about going to college. Maybe they thought that it wasn't necessary to have a long-lost twin angle in the story, but... Mm. Dr. Savannah, um... I was a little... I was a little skeptical about how he had, uh, you know, this beef against his own family, but I guess it does kind of show a mirror to Billy's struggle with his own family issues. The Seven Deadly Sins are a lot more prominent here than they were in John's story. Um, I think they were used pretty well. Um, my only, I guess, I guess my biggest criticism would be that while their designs aren't bad, they just seem a little generic when you bunch them all together and 
they don't seem more like the embodiment of the evils to mankind and more uh, like the bad guys you'd fight in a video game but like other than gluttony who's got the like whose entire body is basically a mouth it's like why what why are any of these like pride why is that one you know envy why um like <laughs> But even Shazam makes a joke later on, like, I thought lust would look a lot hotter, but he's like, w which one was supposed to be lust? I mean, there should be something about their designs that, you know, evoke the kind of sin they're supposed to be. I mean, that would have been interesting, but maybe they, <laughs> maybe they couldn't afford to design anything more distinct. They just, they just kind of look like they're cut from the same basic cloth, but some had wing one had wings one ate too much and whatever they do manage to kind of blend the different versions the classical and the new 52 as far as the origin goes um the wizard is looking for a pure-hearted soul to be his champion and he has trouble finding it he goes through a lot of different candidates when he finds Billy Batson, Billy isn't like this angry kid telling him to back off. They do make a few jokes about, uh, that kind of lead, like, oh, this guy's a pervert or something, but, you know, it's, they're doing it for jokes. I didn't really find it all that funny myself. Um, but when he finally does decide, okay, I'm gonna, you know, take hold of the staff and say my name, and it's not like in the comic where he has, where Billy has to feel something in order to change he just he says shazam and lightning hits so that like the classical that's there as is uh shazam saying the wizard shazam saying that you know he'll have the wisdom of solomon and the strength of hercules and so on and so forth again the classic iconic figures that he draws some kind of power from however Billy doesn't seem to show much wisdom of Solomon in the movie. He just didn't seem to stray too far from what you'd think a 14, 15 year old kid would do in that situation in a movie like this. And like I said, he can't say Shazam with a feeling. He'll transform whenever he says Shazam. Savannah definitely did not want to save his family because there's a boardroom scene that gets kind of uh, intense for the little kids. <laughs> I mean, I, I watched a uh, couple of videos about uh, the movie before I did this, and I, I guess one of them, I think it was either it was either Movie Bob or maybe it was Captain Midnight. Someone said that they. Uh, there was some kids either at a theater they were at or some theater they heard about. Some 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 people had to leave at, at the boardroom scene because some kid got really upset, which is kind of understandable. I mean, especially what happens there. But anyway, now uh, gonna delve into some spoilers because I don't know what else to say without getting too spoilery. Um, Dr. Savannah was one of the candidates the wizard, you know, looked into to being his champion, but he straight up told him, you're not worthy, you're never going to be worthy. Because he kind of fell for uh, the temptations from the sins. That seemed a little harsh, like he, come on man, people skills. Uh, but even so, the wizard isn't entirely blameless here, because... When Savannah's like walking up to the wizard, he's like, on this side, it's like, you know, statues of the sins that are actually the sins. And on the other side, there's this pedestal with a glowing orb in this weird kind of uh, casing. I, I can't really describe what it is, but it's like not well protected, especially if y it opens up as you reach for the shiny little glowy thing. Um, and it's, it's right there. It's right there. And later on, when Savannah finds the Rock of Eternity again as an adult, he just reaches for it, and it releases the sins. Why would you have the sins right across the hall from what releases the sins? I mean, for all the wizard's talk of needing to find a worthy champion and so forth, like, 
he, he couldn't think to like put that little orb inside a safe or like underneath his throne or something I know his powers are waning and everything but jeez so Billy and Freddy their jaunt testing out Billy's powers are a bit more light-hearted it's not like the comics did it like all grim and gruesome in the comic he stops a woman from getting mugged and when she can't think of any way to thank him uh, he says, well, I'm a little short on cash. <laughs> Whereas in the movie, he saves a woman that, from getting mugged, even though she kind of had the situation handled. She maced the dude. He didn't even really get her purse. And, uh, like, he's, and he and, Ar and, he and Freddie start arguing about, you know, this and that. And the woman's like, here's my, here's some money. I, I didn't see anything. Bye bye and she ends up giving him like 70 odd bucks. Even Billy says in the moment like I didn't do this for money, which already puts him ahead of the Jeff Johns reinvention. They go up for beers and it's played more comical than in the comic. And there is a scene where they go to a gentleman's club and I get and I think the joke is that adult, you know, Shazam went in there and only got some hot wings and you didn't see any actual nudity. I know that's like kind of something like you, they expect young uh, boys to want to do, like drink beers and go see some naked ladies. I was not the kind of kid that was desperate to, you know, drink a fifth of scotch or, you know, sneak my way into a strip club or something like that. Just, so I can't really relate to that. But, well, a convention is a convention. And even though I saw from the commercials that Freddy was going to be uh, recording Billy testing out his powers, I didn't really think he'd end up posting them on YouTube, which, for one thing, uh, kind of makes him locatable, doesn't it? Like, if someone is really interested in finding more out more about Shazam then they can say, oh, this account is owned by Freddie Freeman, and well, you're gonna find him, and so... It gets really popular, and Freddie can already monetize on his videos. <laughs> Unlike me. <laughs> anyway, like I said earlier, the crux of Billy's story is that he's looking for his mom. Not his dad, his mom. We get this flashback to when he's a kid, from Billy's perspective, and his mom's trying to pop some balloons with a dart, and he wants, I want the tiger, and he says, and her, and in a very jovial tone, um, she says, like, she's not going pro here. We get that flashback again later, but from someone else's perspective, and the differences between them are kind of important to something that leaves me a little mixed. Um... I guess you could say it's a bit more relatable, but, you know, like, I'm, I'm just, I, I don't hate it, but I'm not in love with the idea either. And when you see it, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. One of the things that was, it's, it's kind of small, but it, it, it's, they early on say, like, in his first scene, uh, you know, standing outside a pawn shop that has an alarm going and the cops show up, Billy says, holy moly, the boys in blue, it's like, he says, holy moly, which is was like kind of Billy's catchphrase back in the day. He says it in this kind of ironic sense. Like, clearly he doesn't say that often, and like, he's saying it ironically at best. Says it again later, both Billy and Shazam, and it feels a bit more natural, a bit more organic. And... I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised they, they did that, because, you know... Jeff Johns, in his reinvention, he just kicked that right out the door when Billy gets the Rock of Eternity, and he says, Holy crap! It's funny, like, how, you know, you gotta swear, or you're not really an adult, and yet that's probably the most juvenile mindset I can think of. Yeah. Anyway. I got one last big spoiler that uh, some of you might have expected. I know I saw it coming, and I'll stay how I saw it coming in a moment, but just like, if, if you haven't seen the movie and you want to see the movie, just like, stop the video here and catch it later, because you, this is something you might want to see on your own uh, without any spoilers, so 
We good? Okay. So I saw some, like an ad for some Shazam movie merchandise that kind of spoiled this for me. But they do go ahead with the Jeff Johns Shazam family. And that means Billy's foster siblings all become Shazams too. They are all like grown versions of themselves, just like Billy. But, of course, Darla is, like... She's Darla, so she's gonna be more emotive. It's not just, like, to make it more like the comics. It seems like it actually had more of a purpose to... Because there were so many of the deadly sins out that it helped to have these other people helping. Um, even though, like, Billy has actually had some training, and you could even say that Freddy, by watching and being a superhero whiz that he is, like, he could do some, that he would be fine on his own, but, like, you got Darla, you got Pedro, who is normal form, is a very heavy set kid, and, uh, you know, Eugene, who spends all his time on video games, and Mary, like, maybe she goes jogging or something, I don't know, but, it, you know, it's it's not unlike all those movies from when I was growing up, where the kids, you know, come through in the end to help save the day, so it's it's some it's some nice fun for the for der Kinder. You see Freddy wearing various superhero shirts throughout the movie: Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and uh, it's like he's got a batarang and he's got a bullet that you know is authenticated to have bounced off Superman. And when they go to help Billy confront Savannah, he throws the batarang. And as I'm watching that scene play out, I just know, I mean, how it should have ended is, of course they're going to have to make Batman a part of this. Him sitting in his booth with Superman saying, yeah, I really helped save the day against Savannah, didn't I? What are you talking about, Bruce? Come on, Batarang. The Batarang helped save the day. Because I'm Batman. So I did enjoy the movie. I'm kind of on the fence if, I'm, if I would get the Blu-ray or the DVD, kind of like with Aquaman. I guess it's more that I had less to say about Aquaman because it was just a really good movie, kind of like a Marvel middle-of-the-road movie between their worst, which is still pretty entertaining, and their best. Uh, kind of like Captain Marvel, oddly enough. If you like the classic Shazam, you might get a kick out of this. I mean... It does make some changes that match up with Jeff Johns' writing, as far as I know, but it's not like a total Billy is a big jerk type of deal. He's more of a very kid focused on one particular mission, and he doesn't really mean anyone any harm, but he, but he is kind of looking out for number one. And he can be you know, a little pe uh, petty, he can be short-sighted, but he's not unlikable. And that was the biggest problem I had with the Shazam comic. So it's definitely worth seeing. You could say it is a sign that the DC movies are on the right track, but I'm still not going to get my hopes up about stuff like... Uh, if the Flash movie's getting made, or Birds of Prey, so... Yeah. So, I will see you another time. Later.